Hey, it's Kyra. Welcome back to the Moon Manifesting Podcast. Today, I'm going to be sharing what stelliums mean on your chart and how to work with this energy to manifest your goals. Oh, guys, when I first learned about stelliums, it totally blew my mind because I thought, oh, you know, I know a lot about astrology. And then I was talking to a friend and she's like, oh, do you have any stelliums in your chart? And I was like, what's that? And it just like, it made so much sense. So I'm really excited to share this with you because um, stelliums are one of the things that I always check for whenever I'm looking at someone's chart during a reading. Um, like they'll just stand out to me and I'll be like, that's something that you really need to focus on in your life. So yeah, we're going to be exploring exactly what exactly is a stellium and what it means depending on where it is on your chart and how you can work with that energy. Alrighty, so a stellium. What is a stellium? So a definition of a stellium is that it's a group of three or more planets in a uh, specific house or zodiac sign on your chart. Okay, so let me uh, just kind of like define this in a bit more like tighter, <laughs> in a bit of a better way. So, okay, you may have like uh, a few different planets that are maybe in one zodiac sign, but maybe they're in two different houses. I generally find that, um, you know, they've got to be in both the same zodiac sign and the same house. Um, and likewise, like you could have like, you know, some planets are in the same house, but they're in two different zodiac signs. Um, and so, yeah, the, the energy is kind of split. So you, we kind of just want to look where you have a group of planets and they're in that same sign and the same house. Now, it can be uh, three planets. I generally don't include asteroids in this. Um, we're just looking at the planets. Um, but I exclude the sun and the moon. So if there's a sun or moon in the stellium, then we want to have three other planets as well. So, um, yeah, planets. So that could be Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, or Pluto. Did I miss Neptune? I think I got them all. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, so we yeah we want to look at on your chart to see if you have a stellium. Okay, so have a look now. If you have your chart handy, pull it out and have a look on your chart. Do you have a group of three or more planets that are in that same section, same zodiac sign, same house? Check it out, and then we'll move on to what's next. So. Um, while I'm waiting for you guys to check your chart, I'm going to chat a bit about my own chart. Um, <laughs> so I have a stellium in my second house in Capricorn. I have uh, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus. Um, and I've also got the asteroid Vesta, but like I said, asteroids don't really count when it comes to stelliums. Um, but it is interesting because it's, you know, it kind of works um, because I've got the three planets plus the asteroid. Anyways, I have this second house Capricorn stellium. So I'm going to be going through in a second exactly what it means depending on the houses and everything that your stellium falls in. But for me, when I found out about this second house Capricorn stellium, it really made a lot of sense. So I'm a Gemini sun and I'm a Scorpio rising and I'm a Libra moon, yet I am so, uh, like I, I always kind of felt like, you know, I'm very Virgo-ish. I really have always resonated with the Virgo energy, like really, I'm really organized. I love to do lists. I love, um, yeah, just being really organized and efficient and productive. And when I found out that I had this Capricorn stellium and what that means for me, um, especially in my second house, it made so much sense about like how I am like really uh, ambitious and like goal orientated. And like that Capricorn energy has a lot of like earthy groundedness and very practical. And so that really that Capricorn stellium for me really balances out like my air sign, sun and moon, um, which, you know, th those two things alone kind of, you know, <laughs> they don't make one an organized person. Uh, but my Capricorn stellium, yeah, it's very grounding and it shows up a lot 
in a lot of my other traits. Um, so my, yeah, my stellium, I feel like is one of the most important things on my chart. Like, you know, obviously sun, moon and rising are quite important, but my Capricorn stellium, it's, uh, yeah, it shows up in so many areas of my life. I mean, like, for example, like I write a planner every year. Uh, that's like very Capricorn <laughs> and very second house, very like goal setting, um, <laughs> orientated. So, um, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, what I'm trying to say here is just like how important those stelliums are and how they can show up in your life. Um, you know, even though, you know, your sun and moon and rising could be something completely different. So, okay, let's dive into what exactly your stellium means. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, go through like the different houses. Um, you can apply another uh, layer of meaning onto your stellium by looking at the zodiac sign it's in. But for today's episode, I'm just going to be going through the houses because I feel like the houses often, um, you know, they, they tell us quite a lot of information, um, you know, just by themselves. So the thing to remember, though, before we dive into this is that your stellium is like your superpower. So regardless of the exact planets that you have in your stellium, so whether you've got like, you know, Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, or you have like Saturn, Pluto, and Neptune, or whatever. Um, it's it's a superpower. You have like this collection of energy that's really concentrated on your chart. So it's yeah, it's your superpower, and of course that's going to be expressed in different ways depending on those exact planets or zodiac sign or house or whatever. Um, but it's it's a superpower. So yeah, we're really kind of generalizing it into a superpower for t <laughs> for today's episode. Okay, so onto the houses. So if your stellium is in your first house, then your superpower is really to do with yourself, with like putting yourself first and uh, like, yeah, really just being your authentic self. If your stellium is in your second house, then, uh, like me, <laughs> then your superpower could be about like money or finances or uh, like, you know, going after the things that you want, manifesting your goals. If your stellium is in your third house, your superpower can be to do with connecting with others. You might be like a real social butterfly or, um, you know, just a really good storyteller or really good at communicating, like a marketing could be a strength of yours. If your stellium is in your fourth house, then your superpower is to do with your home and family life. You may have a really strong connection to your parents or to uh, like your foundations, like your childhood home or things like that. Um, and you may uh, like really have the superpower about creating security. Um, like the fourth house can be to do with financial security, not just like that emotional security of like having a stable home. Uh, so you may find it quite easy to always have that flow of income into your life so that you always feel financially stable. If your stellium is in your fifth house, the fifth house is to do with creativity and children. So with a fifth house stellium, your superpower can often be to do with like creative expression. Uh, like you might be an artist or a designer or some other sort of creative. Uh, but the other thing uh, with fifth house stelliums is that often children are quite an important part of your life. So whether that's uh, like, you know, maybe you're a teacher at a school or you work with children in some other way, or, you know, perhaps it's your own children um, and, you know, they may have a really important role in your life as well which, um, you know, children often do if you have kids. Um, <laughs> but yeah, often with a stellium, like it's often like a real superpower. Like there's, you know, this real strong calling towards children in your life. So if your stellium is in your sixth house, your superpower is often to do with health, with healing, as well as like uh, like day-to-day -day work and organization. So often when I see a six house stellium, I see uh, like people who would like really love to have uh, like productive morning routines. Like these are the people who just have the most amazing morning rituals and they show up and they're so high vibe and organized and productive. Uh, but the other thing I see with six house stelliums is that they often make really good healers. 
And like, you know, of course it often comes down to those exact planets that are in your stellium. But yeah, the sixth house generally, um, you know, they make really good health workers. So, you know, whether that's a nurse or a doctor or like a naturopath or other sort of healer, um, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting to see how that shows up in, in those people with the sixth house stellium. So if you have a seventh house stellium, you have like this superpower to do with relationships. Uh, you may have like really deep and strong relationships with people in your life. Uh, and you may have like a really supportive role to play with those around you. You possibly make a really good counselor or coach or mentor when you're working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and you know, you may be like, like a good listener. You may always be that person that people can turn to when they need to talk and, you know, you're there to provide a shoulder to cry on or whatever it might be. If you have an eighth house stellium, this is like one of the more tricky stelliums uh, that I've encountered um, because the eighth house is like one of those more darker houses in astrology. It's the home of things like secrets and shadow work. Uh, but it can also be expressed as business and finances. So yeah, when you have an eighth house stellium, and again, it can be dependent on like the exact zodiac signs and planets that are in that stellium, but it often shows up as like a superpower for business or making money, or it can show up as a superpower to do with like exploring the shadows and uh, like psychology and like unraveling the mysteries of why people do things like, um, like a detective work. So, um, yeah, it can be a fun one to have if you do have that eighth house stellium. Um, but at the same time it can, uh, like, yeah, really like bring you down into like those dark depths that, uh, can be difficult to to traverse, but like you're quite suited to traversing those darker waters. Yeah. Okay, so the ninth house, if you have a stellium in the ninth house, your superpower is teaching, educating other people. You help people find new perspectives. Uh, you may have like a real kind of philosophical approach to your life. Like that could really be um, one of your superpowers, like being quite a deep thinker and pondering the meaning of life and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, you really stand out as a teacher. You go really deep and then you bring that knowledge back and you use it to teach others to pass on that wisdom and that knowledge. For those with a 10th house at Stelium, your superpower is really like, uh, you know, your career. It's really like about standing up and being famous, <laughs> being a celebrity. 10th house um, is often to do with publicity, like being noticed, getting visible. Um, so yeah, when people have a stellium in the 10th house, like they're often people who are not afraid to be in the spotlight and they've probably naturally, uh, you know, been in the spotlight for whatever reasons, uh, you know, whether they're famous, um, you know, for, you know, whatever reasons, um, that, that seems to be quite natural for those people with that 10th house stellium. So if you have an 11th house stellium, then that 11th house energy can really bring your superpower to like being uh, like a very community minded person. You often will, uh, you know, think about others first. You'll put others first before yourself. Uh, and you know, that's, that's not always a bad thing, but it is like, you know, something to be mindful that you're not always putting people first. Um, but yeah, those people with the 11th house stelliums, they're often the people that you're seeing really involved in the community. They're often the people who are out there volunteering, uh, donating their time, their resources, they're doing charity work. They are, you know, giving away stuff because they are, um, you know, always giving to other people in need. They're yeah, really involved in the community. Um, yeah, like there's yeah different ways that that could manifest into your life if you have an 11th house stellium. But yeah, it really comes down to that community involvement, like being really involved. 
And then finally, if you have a 12th house stellium, you guys, uh, you guys just have this superpower when it comes to uh, like a mental health and, you know, taking a break from life, like uh, self care is something that's really important to you. And it's something that you really prioritize because yeah, you have this superpower when it comes to setting those boundaries so that you can rest and recharge and then come back when you're feeling shiny and fresh again. Uh, so yeah, 12th house stelliums are like, yeah, probably one of my favorites because you guys just really know <laughs> what to prioritize in your life. So that is, uh, yeah, the stelliums through the 12 houses. So, uh, yeah, if you, uh, want to <laughs> look at that again, check out the show notes, check out the accompanying blog post because I've got that all written down for you so that you can, um, yeah, go back and <laughs> look at that. So one last thing before we finish off this episode, and that is how to work with your stellium, especially like, you know, weaving that in uh, with moon manifesting, because, you know, that's what I'm all about. This is the moon manifesting podcast. So, okay, how to work with this energy. There's two main ways that I love to work with this stellium energy. So as I mentioned before, I have a stellium in Capricorn. So what I do is whenever the moon is in Capricorn, I am aware that the moon is passing over my stellium. And I know that this is like, you know, a really good time for me to be working with that stellium energy. And for me, that's, you know, really about being ambitious, about manifesting my goals and, um, you know, planning for the future strategically and all that, you know, good Capricorn stuff. So, so I, you know, I really look out for when the moon is in Capricorn and I use that energy to my advantage. When the moon is passing over those points on your natal chart, you know, it's igniting that energy and you can absolutely tap into that energy and use it. And not just like, you know, for when your stellium is like, um, you know, when the moon's passing through your sun sign, like that's a time when you're really like, you know, shining and, um, you know, being your authentic self and being quite happy. So, um, yeah, the, as the moon moves throughout the zodiac, uh, you know, every 28 days, like it takes about two and a half days to move through a single zodiac sign. Um, you know, you can work through your whole natal chart and really fill in to the energies that come up, uh, depending on, you know, the moon moving through those different parts of your chart. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that wasn't too of like an abstract sort of concept. I'm sure that makes sense. Um, so that's one way that I love to work with my stellium is, yeah, looking at when the moon is going to be crossing over my stellium. And it doesn't have to be like exact because like I said, the moon doesn't move quite fast. Um, you're just looking at like, you know, those two or so days that the moon is in that sign that your stellium is in and, you know, plan your life accordingly. So, you know, if your superpower, you know, according to whatever house your stellium is in, um, like say your, your stellium is in your 12th house. And so it's all about resting and recharging. Then those times of the month are a really good time to, you know, just put your phone in airplane mode and, you know, tell people like, you know, don't call, I'm going offline for a few days or, um, you know, even just going on a retreat or just going on a holiday or whatever it is so that you have that break. Um, so yeah, really like tuning into how can you use your superpower during that time when it's being ignited by the moon. So the second way that I love to work with my stellium is quite similar, but it's by using the sun. So the sun moves approximately one degree per day. So, uh, you know, there's kind of like one day when the sun's going to be hovering over each of your planets. So if you have a stellium, then depending on like uh, the exact degrees, how far away those planets are and stuff, there could be like a week or two when the sun is like really just igniting that stellium. So uh, for me, uh, with my Capricorn stellium, uh, this tends to happen in the last week of the year, like that last week of December, the sun is uh, moving over my Capricorn stellium. And it's so funny uh, because I've noticed before I even knew anything about astrology, like pretty much my entire adult life, 
every time, like in that period after Christmas, I'm obsessed with planning for the year ahead. I will get myself a diary if I didn't get one for Christmas and like I will plan out my entire year ahead. And I have done this, yeah, for, you know, over 10 years now. And it wasn't until more recent years when I became an astrologer and learnt about astrology and it was like, oh, that's why that happens. The sun is moving over these planets on my chart, which are in Capricorn, it's really igniting that energy. So you can find uh, those exact dates that the sun is moving over those degrees of your stellium by using an ephemeris or uh, checking out uh, some different astrology tool, uh, tools online um, and if you have no idea where to start book in a reading with me and I can tell you exactly those dates that are coming up um, that is something that I tend to do in my readings anyway I love to find those exact dates um, that things are going to happen for you so yeah there's that option too so that you can find out exactly um, yeah when to harness that energy of your stellium your superpower so I hope that this episode was really helpful for understanding your stellium on your chart and how to work with that energy. Be sure to check out the show notes below for the full information and uh, don't forget to download your free moon manifesting calendar as well in the show notes because that's going to tell you exactly when the moon is moving through the different zodiac signs so that you can know exactly when the moon's going to be igniting that stellium on your chart and how to work with that energy. The free moon manifesting calendar has these little prompts uh, depending on the um, lunar energy of the day. So you may find that that really aligns with the energy of your superpower anyways. So yeah, everything you need to know is in the show notes below, all those links I've mentioned. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, review, subscribe, or whatever it is, depending on where you're listening to today. See you next week on the Moon Manifesting Podcast. Have a fantastic week and stay magical, stay manifesting, and stay tuned. I'll talk to you soon.